nice and tidy edited down video, but I, I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings. So you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. Oh my goodness, look how bright that is. <laughs> Let me turn it down. I turned the light on right before I went live. Whoops. There, that's a little better, huh? It's a little zoomed in, but I can't really change it. Ooh. Did you miss me? <laughs> How's it going? Here, we'll put this on here. Hi. I clipped my hair to my jacket here. Hello, hello. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Amy. Hi, Fiona. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Beverly. <laughs> Thanks, Beverly. Hi, Justine. Hey, Louis Leah. How's it going? Um, <clears throat> I have slept so much stuff here for today. And it was an amazing trip. Like, the Sew Expo was awesome. How have you guys been? What have you guys been up to? What are you guys sewing? Are you ready for spring? It's been... Um, so long like I, I think so expo week was a week I would have streamed so it's been like three weeks so yeah anyway how are you <clears throat> hi Deb hi Ann I have like something on my glasses and I'm just trying to ignore it right now so um, I made a little slideshow for you and it's not great because I'm just not, I'm so in the moment when I'm at these things, I can't sit there and take video and stuff. But I did take little videos and stuff like that. And it's a, like a five minute thing. I couldn't get my, my editing software to render it though. So I'm just gonna do it manually. It's not long. There's little videos here and there. So you're, you're swear sewing, <laughs> oh no. Hi Ellen. You just finished sewing your spring seeds. Oh, okay. Yeah, that counts. Hi, Danny. You're sewing a fleece half zip. Wait, haven't you sewn one of these before, Beverly? That's awesome. I I, I like sewing those. I think I think those are such a great, you know, garment to have in your wardrobe. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Fighting with your bra toile. Yeah, I, uh, I think that's like going to be the one thing I'm going to tell you. I can't sew on my new sewing machine. So, all right, you guys ready for my little, um, my little slideshow, my manual slideshow? <laughs> so let's see here. Wait, let's start it from the beginning. Let's actually do this. Um, There we go. And then I'm going to organize this. I meant to sort, ascending. Why aren't you sorting? Sort, name. There we go. Oh, are these all not like, oh my goodness. All right. So this is my first outfit of the day, 
or outfit of the day. <laughs> this is my first outfit at Sew Expo. I wore my um, auburn and the button up and my new jeans. And why can't I scroll to the next thing? Can you not scroll through with movies? What? <laughs> so this is my project bag class. Um, my brain needs you for the collar zipper. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, the Airbnb was great. So this is my, my very first class I taught was the four hour long project bag class. And it was tough. <laughs> um, the machines were like really good machines, but I didn't get a chance to play with the machines and figure out and like tell them, this is exactly how I need these to be set up. You don't get much time. Um, so these guys were troopers and I caught these last few people. I was like, wait, 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 will you guys take a picture with me? Other people had already taken off. So um, yeah, Aisha was front row. There she is again, she stayed. And um, everybody got like all the way through to, and had one end sewn for sure. And I think just one, one end was left. So not, not bad, it is a tough bag. And then this, these are also two guild members, Aisha and Anne on the left. She was instrumental in giving me tons of tips at teaching and being at my first sew expo. So that was really great. Oh, here's my next day, this is my next outfit. So I have the Sylvan jacket and then my little self-drafted blouse and um, some more jeans that I made. Um, I tended to like to wear like a jacket over a blouse so that I had pockets and I had something warm to wear. All right, and there's Sydney with the scissor shirt. That's fabric I designed. <laughs> she made a t-shirt out of it. And this is Shalva on the right, and then obviously Aisha next to me. Aisha said, we gotta make sure we take a picture. And I just whipped out the camera and took a picture. I'm glad I did. I've learned that you just need to do it ASAP just in case you never think of it again. So we snapped a few pictures there. Um, hi, Mullen. There's a um, There was a button vendor, and they were tubs of buttons. I'll show you the few I got. It was addictive looking through these bins and it was tough not to buy a lot more. Um, and the one thing that struck me about this, like when I was going through all these bins was, cause I've, you know, we've all looked at vintage buttons at antique stores and they're kind of cumbersome because some of them are in plastic bags. Some of them are on huge cards. Some of them are safety pinned together. These people were so smart. They sewed the buttons all on, on this exact same weight cardstock and exactly like as small of a footprint as possible. And it struck me, I'm like, someone has hand sewn all these buttons onto all these cards. And she said, oh yeah, that's my sister. <laughs> so respect for that. All right, here's my notions case class. And if you can see, they're all holding up um, their notions cases. So they got to sew three in my class. This went a lot easier. It's still not easy. You know, you're, you've never sewn this thing potentially. You're sewing binding, vinyl, stiffener, a zipper, all this little tiny thing. Um, and uh, most people got through two, some of them got through three. So it was great. And it was kind of a fun class. Okay, what is this? Oh, this is my Next, I literally took like one photo a day. <laughs> it's terrible. This is my uh, Friday outfit. I taught two classes this day, so I wanted to be kind of cozy. And um, this was a blouse I made from that same block pattern, but I ended up raising the armhole back and putting, um, and, and that's it, that's all I did to it. And the lift is, it's perfect. I've got it dialed now. I rounded the collar points and that's about it. And I added the gathers to the sleeve as well. Um, there's Shalva again. This is my double double class, which is the pattern I just launched and I'm streaming about a little bit tomorrow and I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, so this was a vinyl bag and a fabric upper, a webbing, um, handle and, um, yeah, there's a good view of it. That's Sydney. She finished hers. She sewed two in class. <laughs> uh, and there's a pocket on the inside and you can see what's in there from the outside, but you can reach into the bag to access the pocket. So it's secure. Um, this was, uh, probably my, I feel like this was this one in my seam finish class. I was definitely feeling the most relaxed and confident because there was only seven, six or seven people in this class. 
which was kind of a nice number. Like I think 10 or less is a really good number because I can really go around and spend time with each person and we don't get behind, you know, and everyone kind of keeps up. So, um, and then they, these gals finished theirs as well <laughs> or close. How did everyone like those machines? Um, I don't, I don't know how everyone in the class felt about it. For me, it, I had never used this machine before and it was pretty fancy. Like it had a lot of features on it. <clears throat> and so, I mean, for me, it's not my style of machine, but it was a really nice machine. It was a Foff 720, I think. I had the same classroom for all of my classes, which on one hand was awesome because I got very familiar with the classroom. I got, I got to know this machine. Um, and I got to know, I got to know the audio visual stuff because there's a behind me in this classroom, there's a, a screen and I had a document camera at the machine to project what I was doing, which I'm very familiar with because I do that here. However, this was my biggest problem in my project bag class was that the document camera projects best, like the, the way it can look at things was better if it, best if it was sitting on the left of my machine, which is where your project needs to be when you're sewing it. And the project bag is huge, bulky, and stiff. So it was just like knocking that camera and it was really frustrating. I had this much space, I'm not kidding, to sew that project bag, which was really hard not to wrench on the machine. But it has this really cool feature <clears throat> called a hover lift. And while that was an amazing feature, I should have learned quickly to turn that off for the project bag class. The other classes, it was fine, but it was, it was fine. It is what it is. Some people love them, some people don't, you know. This was my last day. I went comfortable, so I'm wearing, actually the blouse I'm wearing now, my Auburn again, and my jeans, so. Last day. <laughs> I think that Auburn needs to be a little longer and back after I've seen all these videos. Okay, so here's just random sightings on the one of the um, floors of the, there's two vendor halls. So this I think was the, what was this room? I can't remember what this one, which, or not room, but what vendor? Oh, this is Janome. If you wanna, if you are looking at a machine and you wanna try a machine, go to a show like this. Bring your fabric and go to a show like this because you can try everything there. They are, and the, this show in particular, like I don't know other shows, but for this one, it's one machine vendor. Here, I'll pause this. It's one machine vendor, it's quality sewing, I think. And they have multiple booths um, dedicated to every um, machine type. And so, um, and they have people on hand to get other, get more machines. Um, go pick one up for you. So there's a lot of options and every day they could have added more. And so that was really great. And I did go to the Juki booth twice. And the second time I brought a project bag, the one in my class that I didn't finish and sewed with it. So, all right, this is just a, I just love, this is really cute. So these were little bag kits, a lot of hand sewing. So we just admired from afar. <laughs> Hi, Kira, how's it going? Hi, Padinos, how's it going? So yeah, these were cute little bags. This, some of these booths, these people, it's really, they're so good at putting fabrics and stuff together. That's what reels you in. <laughs> the, see this machine here is sewing in a circle, but look, but look right here to the left. Do you see that little peg in the middle? That's why. So it's like creating a, um, like a fulcrum basically, right? Or, or focal point that it just goes around a circle. We, we talked about like how, what this would be useful for. Maybe, I don't know, Christmas tree skirts. <laughs> it was cool though. All right, this is where I got my light. Um, it's called Daylight. This is quality sewing as well. And so they did light up tables and they did lights and I'll show you mine. I, I can kind of tell this is a, it's on a stand on the, on the ground, but you could also make it tabletop and it had a really wide head. And I was showing this one to my husband for the workshop. This is the one I got. I got a magnifying lamp and I have it set up right here, tabletop or floor. Cause I, I just want something. I want to want to hand sew more often. Are you gonna play? It's an embroidery machine. Look at the computer screen on that thing. Look at how huge the computer screen is on these things. There was some really nice machines there you all. <laughs> 
machines there. <laughs> and they were selling machines, so. Okay, this is me sewing on the project bag, like doing a sample. She recorded me doing this and I was using the scissors like an awl. I'm surprised there's no audio. Do you guys hear audio? Because I don't hear audio. Um, so yeah, exactly, Leah. Did it really, Mullen? Wow. Yeah, so I was just seeing like right here, this end of the project bag has two layers of stiffener, uh, four layers of binding, and um, one, two, four layers of fabric. Just right here where I'm sewing. Um, so there's no audio, yeah, that's so weird. Um, and so when you do the corner where the juncture of the bag is, there's a bound section of the bag that meets that corner. So you have all of that plus the other stuff. This is the TL, yeah. This is the one I got, the Juki 15 TL. So this is the three that they had there. They had this one on the right, which is the one I got the right there. And then, what happened to the video? Here we go. They have that one right there, which is the 2010. These are all the TLs. These aren't all of them probably. And then they have this 18 right here on the left. QVP 18. So these are basically the same machine, but they come with different um, like feet and they're, they're skinned differently. Like this one has the blue and stuff. There was also one that, where this woman at the back there in the black shirt, she was sitting at a much, like had a lot of features. Leah, uh, Leah um, Shim I think has a 2010. This, yeah, and I, I, uh, I ended up buying this one right here so it's basically a home version of my industrial machine. I can't wait to show you guys. It's, I, I, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm falling in love all over again. So this is a table place. Um, I should got this table right here on the right, but this one right here, I was very interested in this right here. So I have, do you see these cabinets in the back? I have one of these. I've had it for a really long time and I love it. It's amazing. I don't have it here because um, I use an industrial and it's for a, a machine, a tabletop style machine, like a serger, cover stitch, a, a home machine, whatever you, whatever you, whatever you have. And it has a um, table that lowers so that you can put your machine in there and then lower the machine completely into the cabinet, close the cabinet, put it in a corner. So like if it's a guest bedroom, right, it's out of the way, or um, you want it to look cleaner, or maybe you want to raise it up a little bit and put the, the bed of your machine flush with the table like my industrial is, which is more ergonomic and comfortable. So um, that's an option. And then you can also pull it all the way up and so it sits on top of the table. And so I have one of those, but this table right here in front, you can stand at this. So the whole table raises and lowers, plus there's a tray for your machine to do all three of those things, or, or to be on top or, or a little bit below so it's flush. Hey, Walter. Hey, Nancy. So anyway, um, I, I feel like when I get, I've been interviewed a few times or asked by people what my favorite tool is, and hands down, I always say a good table. And like this one right here, just something that you can stand at comfortably and, and spread your project out. And then after that, make sure your machine is comfortable. I'm telling you, most people hate cutting. There are so many reasons they don't like cutting. So if you remove doing it on the floor or on the dining room table, it really makes the difference. And like this table here, it, it like, um, folds up so you it can be like a narrow thing and you can slot it into a corner or you can leave it set up all the time. It was very sturdy and very affordable. So yeah, right, Kira? Yeah, I, I don't blame you at all. Yeah, so, um, so that was kind of cool. All right, and then this is just, these were just pretty. <laughs> Some thimbles, I took a little video for the hand sewers because there was just such a pretty little display of all the thimbles that they had. This was the, the uh, John James booth where they sell needles. That's all they do. <laughs> oh, this is Caterpillar. Remember when we were looking at the Caterpillar, like all the vendors? So they do light up a rotary knife um, tables. So see all these tables here? Even this round one, which also rotates like a Lazy Susan. And then these are replaceable self-healing rotary mats on top. So it's pretty cool. 
Yeah, right, Amy? Yeah, I think mine's from Tracy's Tables, too. I bought that thing for $1,500 a long time ago, 20 years ago or something. It's still perfect. <laughs> I love it. You have a cheap Ikea as a standing height that I use for work. You know, you might be able to get those cups, the risers that you can set a table in. They look like upside down cups. Yeah, they were really nice, Walter. Light up rotary mats, that's what these are, basically. So this is the largest one right here. <clears throat> Shalva got one. We can ask Shalva what she thinks about it. Um, so if you trace patterns or do things where having a surface you can light up, need light lit up. So that was kind of cool. So that's Cutter Pillar and the Daylight people had something like that too. Oh, it's another little video of them. I didn't realize it took two. So that's them. Oh, this is the African Batik booth. I bought some fabric and one of these little baskets. I actually, these Af the African booth people, um, I almost emailed them on my second driving day because they were, we were talking about the drive and they had to go to like Arizona or something and they were kind of nervous and I almost messaged them um, oh, and because they were leaving a couple days after me. I almost said, here's the site you need to be haunting the whole time. So it was fun. This is just color. Like these booths, some of these booths are merchandised really well to lure you in. It's just like candy, isn't it? Here, let me, come here, give me the, give me the bar. Here we go. I don't even know what this booth is. <laughs> Can I zoom in? I can't. Yeah, it's true, Sarah. Ankara, you know what? I don't feel very knowledgeable enough to say if Ankara is that specific. I mean, they had African batiks. Okay, uh, my I, I only bought a little bit of fabric, but honestly, it, it was just two pieces that I really intentionally bought the the African batik, which I'll show you. And I bought a very nice piece of wool suiting. It's wool silk cashmere. And I uh, one of I ran into a viewer who was walking around with me on the last day, and then she was like, "Hey, let me take some pictures of you." with these different wools so I could pick the right one. So these were the tests. She sent me the pictures. And um, I ended up with this one. This is the one I got and it's sitting here. So I'm gonna make a blazer out of this. Let's see what's next. Oh, this is my drive home. It was either snowing or raining the entire time. It was awful. <laughs> but Shasta was gorgeous. So Shasta is like a really big mountain, <laughs> you know, Mount Shasta. Um, and, uh, you know, that kind of welcomes you when you come into California and they, it always has some fantastic cloud formation. That's like a really crazy cloud. Yeah. I'm wearing different glasses at the expo. So it has this really cool, look at that. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Uh, Mount Lassen is kind of just past this and, uh, Mount, uh, Mount Lassen. Yeah, Mount Lassen's nearby here as well. Mount Lassen closer to us than Shasta. The drive is on paper 10 and a half hours, but you need to stop, you know, to get gas, go to the bathroom, eat. So it's like a 12 hour drive. And I um, was doing it in two drives. Yes, hey babe, how's it going? I was gonna say lenticular, but I wasn't sure if that was really a lenticular cloud. I had to show it to him. <laughs> so yeah um so I um drove up to Portland the first day which is like a seven hour drive <laughs> yeah as we know you yeah exactly he's probably coming here to rally the troops on his fabric store idea <laughs> um and then um I like the drive to Puyallup is like two and a half, three hours. And then um, on the way home though, I went from Puyallup to Grants Pass, which is in Oregon as well. So I did my big day again the first day and that was such a good decision. So it ended up being fine. It's just hard when you do those, those weather 
bigger weather drives with no one else to like navigate, like to go, oh, here's a hotel or this is what the cans are saying. So <laughs> it does. I could totally see that. Their colors are blue and pink, Walter. Yeah. All right. So let me show you um, some of the things I got here. Um, I have doo -doo -doo. <laughs> you love this place. All right, so here's, I brought in my machine. <sighs> Do you know what kind of burden it was to take this out of my house, you guys? <laughs> I want it there. All right, so here's some of the buttons I got. I was really actually thinking about shirts for Michael and shirts for me. So I got some of these little, in that big button, all those button bins. All of these were kind of cool. And I think all but the green ones are two whole buttons. So that's a score. I, um, so tight was, is one of the vendors who reached out to me and s sort of sponsored me, low key sponsored me. And they basically gave a pack of these needle, these magnets, a pack of three. Um, they gave me like seven of those and it was, the perfect number for my double double class so i gave them to everybody and it's a, basically a very tight magnet so perfect for that double double which you'll see tomorrow so i thought i'd shout them out since they and they and this is what i had left i let people use these this is it's like a, a scissor mat thing so you wear this you wear this on your clothes and then there's a magnet there which you know i, won't, I probably would do but yeah if you have a pacemaker you don't want to do that um, all right, I also got the Clover Desk Threader. So you put a needle in here and then you go boop and it threads your needle and I'm still getting the hang of this. And so I bought needles for it that aren't working great and then I bought a new pack of needles the other day and these are working pretty good. These are three through nine sharps. So I went onto their site. I had three websites up to, in order to pick needles for this, but now I feel like I have needles for the rest of my life. I mean, needles are cheap. <laughs> and um, this guy was very affordable and he came highly recommended by a bunch of guild members. So I'll, I can show you how that works. Um, I am on my quest to find the easiest way to uh, insert elastic in things when I can't use my loop turner. And so I got this. So this is the Clip and Glide bodkins is so weird having the camera over my left shoulder <laughs> um and so basically this is how it works let me see so this right here opens up right and you put your elastic in here like this put your elastic in there you close it and now you can thread this through because it has this like aerodynamic tip to go through the casing and it's very strong. Like I, I'll put it on a piece of elastic for you. Cause I think I have a piece right here somewhere. I think I do. Oh no, it's right here. <clears throat> do you prefer, why? Oh, well, because it's less hand sewing. <laughs> that's all. That's the only reason I prefer two whole buttons. Less hand sewing. All right, so see my elastics in there and look at how strong it is. I'm pulling, I can't get it out. So that's very exciting to me. I had used these little guys, one piece of elastic and um, it's, it's, it broke. So this didn't work out so well, but this worked really great. Um, I will say I tried to use this the other day and your casing, if your casing is for this width of elastic, not going to work. This is too big. This whole mechanism, you have to be able to, let's see, do I have a, here we go. So your casing is going to have to be like a, potentially like an inch and a half for you to be able to get this in there. Okay. So just, I'm being honest, very honest with you. So it looks great with this little tiny piece of elastic. It is not ideal for this kind of elastic. It didn't work the other day when I used it for that. So um, unless your casing is really big, so I'm just telling you that. Um, let's see, that's all these little things here. So let me just move these off to the side. 
Now I can take some of these home and put them away here. <laughs> oh, here's my basket that I, I got a little basket at the African boutique place. And then here is the African boutique and it's, this was her basket, Mary. So I have one of these baskets. Do I have it with me today? Oh, I do. I use this thing. If you've known me for a bit, you've seen that. Shoot, my lunch is still in my basket. I forgot. I had so much stuff to schlep up here. So this is, I use this basket for everything. I love it. <laughs> and um, I've, uh, when I saw that they had this little tiny one, I was like, this is great. I, I really wanted it. So I got this too. So not sewing related, lunch box related. Um, here's the African batik that I got. I think it's like tablecloth size. It's, uh, I want to say it's two yards or three yards, but I got a very low key one, I would say. All right. And then um, I went by the Splash Fabric booth because a bunch of times because I'm going to be doing some videos for them and I can't believe I didn't get any video of their booth like that kind of surprises me I don't know I feel like I did <laughs> I was there a lot but um I'm doing some of their how-to videos they have free pat all their patterns are free on their website and they do a laminated cotton that's really amazing like I for, when they first reached out to me I was like "Ooh, I don't want to go back into plastics um but they're very environmentally focused they even um, engineered this laminate so that it's more environmentally friendly and um, you can maybe see on my dress form back there I have two sp split tool belts made in their fabric so I'm already trying to record some of the videos and so they're they've asked for my, one of my free patterns on their site and I don't have a dedicated how-to because I did it for um, that uh, advent sewing advent what's that called it's got a terrible name um, the sewing advent thing. Oh my gosh, what's that called? Anyway, um, what's Sovember? No, it's not Sovember. What the heck is that thing called? You, you, you know what I'm talking about. Vlogmas, 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 terrible name. Yeah, so that's the only, yeah, thank you, Hillary. Yeah, yeah, so it was that, uh, that's where my how-to was. So I'm making a how-to, but I'm also doing three of their patterns and um, I just was waiting for webbing. So. Anyway, mostly they do laminates, but they had a few fabrics that were laminated and unlaminated. So I just picked these up for kind of fun to have because I think they'll be great pocket fabric and they're cute prints. So thank you guys, Vlogmas. Yeah, I could not remember. Some things I just hate so much, I just don't want to remember, you know? <laughs> like the names of things. Vlogmas was really fun though. All right, so here's my fabric that I got. It's really pretty really soft. I didn't get to go to Milland. I got a little sick when I was in Portland, so I couldn't go there and that was my plan. So that worked out because I got this. <laughs> this is my splurge. Um, all right. I think that brings me to my two big purchases, my machine here. And then this light, let me show you this light really quick. Can I turn this around without it doing anything weird? because it's been cutting out on me. All right, so here's my, here it is right here. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> oh, this is so tight. Why is this so tight? Okay, I just won't do that. Maybe it might be too bright for you guys right now. I can dim it twice, but the magnifying lamp is very cool. And um, I can move it around. How much magnifying is there? Hmm. What kind of thing are we looking for? It says, 650 lumens for the light, 5,500 lux, I don't know what that is, 50,000 life hours, seven watts. Perfect for seam ripping. 
and this is the back. It's called the Magnificent Pro. I put links to everything in the description for once. So yeah, well, here we go. It says, oh, okay. What kind of number am I looking for? Because there is some specs back here. Handy for threading needles, that's great. A number with an uh, other, a number then X. Oh yeah, well, I was looking for that, but I didn't see it. It says 1.75 X semi rimless magnifying lens. Large five inch, 1.75. I don't know if that's helpful. 10 X or five X, one, two, three, I don't know. It says 1.75, but I don't think that's it because it seems bigger than that. Sorry, it's so bright. But it does also come on with a, a post so I can put it on the floor next to me, which is my plan. It's gonna sit next to my chair. So when I'm sitting in chair, sewing on buttons, that's my plan. And um, finishing, finally finishing my March top. <laughs> Plus other things, so. All right, let me turn this off. Maybe it'll be online and it can, we can find that number out. Check the link and it says 1.75X, yeah. So I don't know what that means. Link is in, yeah, link is in the description. Yeah. Okay, this thing's a chunk. 25 pounds. It takes a, it takes a second to turn on. Oh, it's on. <laughs> so let me show you what it came with. So the reason I got this, let's do a little bit of a backstory on why I got this. So um, if you've been kind of listening to me talk about how someday I really hope there's a sewing machine, the dedicated buttonhole machine. And I've talked a big game. I was like, if it was $1,000, I'd buy it. Like, I know that's probably crazy for a lot of home sewers. That is not crazy to me because a good buttonhole is just so worth it. And I would sew more of them and I would have it forever. <clears throat> it would have to be a specific machine. I want it to last forever. Well, then Juki came out with this buttonhole attachment only for their TL series. So the series that says TL. This is a semi-industrial kind of machine. It's a, a home version of my Juki. So I have an 8700-7. So the dash seven means I have electronics, but if you um, took those away, it'd be the 8700. So they're kind of the same machine. Um, and I've heard about these machines they are really awesome. I've even told people like, yeah, I would do this. And if I couldn't get industrials and you're wanting to sew bags, I would get it. And, um, but I had never gotten to try one and there's a few versions. I am not an expert in these machines. You guys, I am not an expert. <laughs> I went and tried it out and I fell in love with it. I was like, this is what I've always wanted in a home sewing machine. It does not do a zigzag stitch. Okay. No zigzag. And there never will be zigzag on this machine, okay? I'm just being really straight with you. Um, it's very simple. There is no computer here. This is very appealing to me. You know, like when you talk about a machine, this is the way I look at it. I have very strong feelings and I am um, not against any of the machines out there. I am just a very basic person when it comes to a machine. And I um, am not a fancy sewer. I do not sew fancy at all, right? So I'm very basic with my sewing and I understand that. Um, and I'm very production oriented. Not everybody's like me. If you like those nice stitches, those fancy stitches, you wanna zigzag, this is not the machine for you. But if you want something that is can do heavy duty and light duty, um, it's geared towards quilters. So most of the attachments are quilting specific and I probably will never use. And, um, you like things like, like for me, quality of life things are, uh, pressure 
regulator for your presser foot, thread snip, knee lift, there's a knee lift, uh, that's where it goes right there, um, and needle down. These are, these are things, that's what I want, that's what this machine does, that's what this does. And so when I use my foot pedal, I can do all these things. I don't even need to touch these things. The only thing I need to touch here is the reverse. That's it. Um, and I do keep looking for mine. Mine is right here. I have it here and I have it here on this machine, but I, this is what I miss right now. That's it. <clears throat> but when you think about machines, like when you're fondly talking about, oh, my grandmother's machine or my great um, grandmother's machine or whatever, I feel like there's potential that this could be that machine for somebody because there's no computers on it. I don't know if some of these things would keep functioning a hundred years from now, if how they're being um, controlled inside, but I do feel like the machine itself is rock solid. So the things it comes with, it comes with something called, a, um, it's like a, it's a foot to deal with tricky fabrics like velvet or vinyl or something. And so it's, it's sensitive. Um, you dial down the pressure. In fact, I need to put the pressure back up because I got it on the machine earlier. Hey Shem, how's it going? I said you get my DX7 fix and trade it for a tail, which I should have gotten in the first place. It would have been cheaper and no computer. Yeah, I really like that there's a lot of help online for fixing my industrial. And so maybe, I don't know if there's a lot online for this one, but um, it ha this is the stitch length right here. This is needle up, needle down. So basically, that's it. That's all it does. I love this. But when I stop sewing, there's no foot on the machine, by the way, right now. Um, it stops needle down every time. That is also a huge quality of life thing. If you are someone who doesn't want to use as many pins, that is a very clutch uh, feature for a machine. So I really like it. I act like I'm selling you this machine, but I'm not trying to sell you. I'm trying to tell you why I like it a lot and why... I justified buying this. So um, the other things it has, it has a, um, a guide for sewing lines, like for quilting. So you attach this to, you know, the foot here and it, you use it with this foot, I think. And then you can move this bar. You can slide this bar along here and then you can say, oh, I want lines that are half inch apart or an inch apart or two inches apart. And you get perfectly parallel lines, right? That's what this is. This is a zipper foot. And basically between this one and the 2010 at the show, that was the difference because they had a, they had a floor model of the 2010, which I was going to get. <clears throat> this was $100 more to get the foot would be about $90. So I was like, well, I'll just get the, this one because it had a couple other things. Maybe I'll use them. So, um, it also has a two free motion feet. You can drop the feed dogs on this machine. This is very nice for quilting, right? Um, this is the regular foot. It comes with four bobbins. Swing bar, I don't know if it's a swing bar, but I've got this adjustable bar. The, the 18 has more quilting features if you are a quilter. I am not a quilter, I did not look at this for quilting. <laughs> so I don't know anything about the quilting stuff. Um, this is a um, specific uh, 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 screwdriver for this machine, an extra the screw goes with one of these. This is a spool cap, oil. And then this right here, if you are someone who doesn't want the thread snip on the foot pedal. So when I'm so I'm gonna show you when I sew that if I just tap the foot pedal, it cuts the thread and raises the needle up. And if you have trouble hitting that a lot, like maybe you scooch up and you hit it, cause I did that a couple of times, you can put this um, block in your foot pedal and then you won't accidentally do that. So that's all that is. So that's everything it came with right there <laughs> in my bin bin tray. <laughs> There's that. Okay, and then the other things, it comes with these two things too. So it comes with a knee lift, which fits on the back side of this table. So here's the knee lift, right? And it goes in that hole right there. And then this is a table. So you put all the legs down, it's very easy. You put all these legs 
like this. Huge table. So it's very important to note that this machine doesn't have a free arm. So if you're used to using a free arm, this is not the machine for you if you like that feature. I am not at all because my machine is flush with the table and a free arm is um, a very narrow bed here on your machine so that you could put a sleeve over it, over the arm. So that is what that is. And um, this one is ugh, heavy. <laughs> this one's really geared towards that quilting crowd. Oops, sorry. I haven't put this on yet. And it's, I, this, this, um, this angle might not be good because it's hanging off, but that's, it's pretty easy. It just goes on there like that. It's a little bright. Huge table. <laughs> it's really huge. Look at this throat space too. Really large throat space. It's, I want to say it's taller than my machine. Um, just a little bit narrower. Let's figure it out. So my machine from the presser foot to the base is 10 inches by five inches high. So this one is a little over six inches and eight inches wide. So it's two inches narrower this way, but an inch taller. So that's really nice. Here's the presser foot. Um, I had it off because I was checking to see if I can interchange my presser feet of my industrial, and I think I can. <laughs> they look identical. So that's really exciting. I got the binder attachment out so we can check that out. Um, let me see. There's a needle threader here. You see this is a needle threader here. I haven't figured out how to use it yet. Sorry. It, need, it threads left to right just like my industrial and I can't see the eye from this angle. Hopefully I got it. I got it. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to take this table off because it's not resting. It's not supported on the table. It's hanging off so I don't want to hurt it. I don't want it to clatter, you know. Let me do this. Does this work for you guys? It's kind of close to me. That's awesome, Terry. I'm excited. Yeah, all those feet on this big table, they have a levelers on them, just like you said. Oh, really? Interesting, Elena. I wonder if you could get those little squishy things to put underneath. You know, my husband uses them when he um, makes like wood things, like tables and things. They're like little, the little squishy dots, you know, that might help. Or the counter, or a counter, maybe you call that stuff a non-slip mat. Okay, I don't have the buttonhole attachment. It's not here yet. I can't make buttonholes with this. All right, let me um, get you, I have my pile of goodies here. So I, um, I have a, I'm, I, <laughs> let me, I'm like, ah, so many things. Um, I set up a space at my house for this. Um, I set, I posted some pictures in the guild and I, I can't tell you guys how happy I am. I haven't had a machine at the house in, I mean, I had one at our house before we moved to this region but it was in the shop, you know, behind our house. And so it's been like 12, 11, 11 years since I've had a machine at home that I can sew at. So I got my cabinet out that's been just sitting in a closet empty. I set it up in the window. Michael made me this little table um, recently, I think for Christmas, um, for like just setting things on. And it's the perfect size for my cutting mat. It fits perfect in this little like weird window alcove we have that's not very usable. And I put my machine there and I sewed on Sunday and I was in heaven. Like I was smiling ear to ear. I was, I got up in the morning. He had stayed over in, in, in Sacramento for a soccer game. And so I had gotten up in the morning and I remember going, oh, I can fix this hole in my pajama bottoms like right now. And so, because <laughs> I would have to usually take, have those, wash them, take them to my office, do it, and then just take them home. You know, it's like schlepping them back and forth. It's always remembering them and stuff like that. And I have this rip <laughs> in those pants because I caught the fly on my 
drawer handles, like I always do. And I went to sit down to fix it. And I instantly just started sewing these quickie cases that I, I have cut out. And I was sewing until 11.45 in the morning in my pajamas, not eating breakfast. So I was, all of a sudden, Michael had texted me. He's like, okay, I'm on my way home. I'll see you in a bit. I'm just gonna stop and get coffee. I was like, okay, that was at 9.30 in the morning. And I re all of a sudden, 11.45 hit. I wasn't even hungry. I was like, oh my gosh, I am still sitting here in my pajamas. I need to take a shower, I need to get up. So anyway, I am in heaven and it's really made me nostalgic for when I got my very, very, very first dedicated sewing room. I remember um, my, my boyfriend at the time and I had gotten this place and it had a spare bedroom and I was allowed to use it for my sewing room. And I would put on the AMC channel, which back then AMC on cable was only old movies. That's all it was, 24 hours a day, no commercials. Occasionally there would be someone explaining the history or the costumes or the significance, the historical things, the backlash, whatever of these old movies. It was amazing, amazing. And um, I would just have that on in the background and I would sew and I would just be smiling in there all by myself. <laughs> so it really made me nostalgic for that. I'm very, very happy. I don't need to be distracted at home. We have a lot of outdoor projects I should be doing. Okay, anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'll get back to me. Hi, Donna, how's it going? <laughs> well, I don't have the attachment to show off yet, but I will. Um, I did get my binding attachment out because I'm kind of curious. I think that I can, um, I use this tape to hold the screw. I, I'm wondering if I can use this on here because <laughs> I might just buy another one of these. They're so cheap. Oh yeah, you could totally use this on here. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. It felt like a kind of a splurge to get this machine and it's so affordable. It's so affordable, not a splurge at all. I'll have this for the rest of my life. The rest of my life for sure. All right. Um, what do you want? What do you want to see? So I do, I brought, got some vinyl here. I was going to see, I've, I've been sewing a little bit on it. I didn't want to um, like, not have ever done anything because you know unboxing takes a while so all right it was so awesome wasn't it nancy all right so um if i move this closer i don't i think i have to have this pretty yeah i can't use the knee lift here <clears throat> that is one thing the knee lift is really far over and my cabinet is you know like my knees are like right here <laughs> so there's not much space there so We'll just, you will just use the presser foot lever. I didn't even check the bobbin. Hopefully we're good. So now I'm going to press, see how it stopped needle down. Do you want me to tone down the brightness? Let me tone down the br brightness. So it means you can do both, but you have to buy an attachment. Yes, that is exactly correct. It is a, a about a $400 attachment. I know, so you told me that too. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it's called the EB-1 DK. So now, um, you see how the needle stopped down? I'm just gonna tap the, the foot pedal. And so it clipped the thread and raised the needle. So just like my industrial. Yeah, I, I definitely, I really hope it gets here soon because I just want to bring my machine home. <laughs> and I'm just gonna leave this here until my machine or my attachment arrives. But I have a feeling I'll get it in the next couple weeks. So this is the TL15. I linked it in the description, <clears throat> but any of the TLs will work with the EB-1. This is only a size 14 needle, by the way. But I just rolled this two, four, six layers of fabric. No prob prob, as my friend says. No prob prob. <laughs> the knee lift is to raise the presser foot. The knee lift raises the presser foot, yeah. 
Exactly. I, um, so you wouldn't have to do this. So completely hands-free sewing, right? You have your knee. I highly recommend getting used to a knee lift if you have one. I know it's odd, but once you get used to it, you'll understand that then you don't need pins as much, right? Because you can hold your work and then your knee lifts this up where, see, my hand didn't have to, wouldn't have had to leave there. So I highly recommend it. So let's sew on some vinyl a little bit. I don't, I, it's very, t there's so many foot pedals under this machine right now. I've, I've uh, four, so I'm trying to find the right one. I mean, that's no problem at all. So see how it stops needle down and then I could use my knee to lift up the presser foot turn, right? And so I'll, I wanted to show you also what fast and slow is on here. So I have it on the highest fast setting. So the fast setting on Juki's is always with a, see there's a rabbit and a tortoise. It's very, very literal. So that's all the way up. <clears throat> um, I can't get this to tilt, sorry. And uh, I just want to show that how easy it is to do one stitch at a time on the highest speed. I'm really not trying to sell you this machine. But if you want to put it down and go pretty quick. So let's see how slow it goes. I haven't tried that yet. The one stitch at a time is about the same as the rabbit. So this is, this is um, as fast as possible right here. You only wear, worry about somebody in the left eye. Yeah, right, Hillary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I kept accidentally um, cutting the thread because I'd adjust in my chair. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Shim. Yep, I've done that for sure. It's like 10 seconds of. I can't. Yep. <laughs> Let's put that back up. So, um, see, it always stops needle down, but I can just press the button there. Um, if you, you can do this, you can sew like this, by the way. If you hold it, it sews really slowly. There's a thread cutter here, too. So you don't have to use the foot pedal. So if you put the bumper in the foot pedal to prevent yourself from using it, um, you could still still utilize the feature without using the your heel of your foot. So, any questions? <laughs> yeah, you can pivot, exactly. Like, I pivot constantly. I pivot constantly. So it's just really nice to st always stop needle down, use your knee, pivot. One stitch at a time, pivot, you know. I had like a dark purple thread on top so you could see the stitches and then just a white on the bottom. I don't have any bobbins yet. I only have four and I haven't wound a bobbin um, besides the cream. The 15 and the 18, um, as far, don't, you guys, I'm not a machine rep and I don't know for sure, but I asked these same questions and the way I understood it was feet. There's feet and there's one other thing because the 18 is the, this is the 15. The 18 has more quilt specific features. You could sew leather, yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, it has the micro lift. That's what it is, Aisha. What Aisha said, it has a micro lift as well, which means, um, um, you guys, I don't know the advertised stitch feed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you guys are so cute. <laughs> I wanted a machine that would take the EB1 and felt like my industrial, and I got it. That's all I cared about. <laughs> I don't know. I linked them in the description, though. I put the 15 and the 18 in the description. They are all straight. Oh, Amy, I don't know. That one I was telling you in the video where there was a woman using the computerized features, I think that's a TL and I think it has um, more than that. 
I don't know though. I didn't even look at it. I wanted a thousand dollar machine, you know? So, um, standard bobbin size. I don't actually know what a standard bo bobbin size is. It came with four and they look very similar to my bobbin on my industrial, but I'm going to confirm with them before I, um, where is one? Before I just swap it out. So here, see to me, they look very similar. The diameter and the height and the inside is the same, but you see how this one has the notch in it. My industrial does not. Some of my industrial ones are um, one side solid and one side holes. So I, I don't know. Um, the feet though seem interchangeable. Yeah, exactly. So I, this is what I was sewing on Sunday, all the binding, stiffener, vinyl, and I'm going to show you guys these tomorrow. You need the notch. Okay. That's what I was thinking because I think, but is the notch just for the bobbin winding? That's what I was wondering. I had a feeling that maybe it was for bobbin winding. I mean, bobbins are a cheap thing, you know, that's in my opinion, like that's not the, that would not prevent me from getting something. Maybe a really specific hard to find needle would kind of drive me crazy because like my baby lock took um, the EL705 and my, my local place doesn't always stock them and that drove me crazy. They would give me theirs because I would come by and I'm like, hey, can do you guys have some? And they'd be like, uh, no. And they would give me, they would give me some of theirs from the back. And I'm like, come on, you know? <laughs> so um, this one just uses standard needles though, not the industrial needles. So one thing to note is that it threads left to right. So my finger's pointing at the eye right now, um, but there's a flat back shank to this needle. So you put the flat back facing this way as opposed to my industrials around shank needle, it's a totally different needle. You would not be able to swap those. So, so as far as I'm concerned, the only thing that is interchangeable between my two machines are the feet, which I'm totally fine with. Cause you know what that means? I can use my, um, my invisible zipper foot now. I'm so happy. <laughs> That's fine, Nancy. You say in the annual, what size bobbins do you get? I mean, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm just not worried about it. Let's see. Uh, bobbins. Let's see. The other um, options for this are, let me just tell, tell you. Oh yeah, so this is called a, it's called a, um, Oh, there is a zipper foot. This I got this because it has a zipper foot, basically. That's the only garment specific thing it has on it. They call this foot, the this one here, an upper feed foot. So you see how they have it hooked to that, um, the, um, needle the bar for doing spacing. So that's what I was telling you about earlier. So the um, optional parts. So here's the optional things you can get. You can get this side open toe quilting foot, quarter inch quilting foot, one fifth inch. That's an imaginary number. <laughs> quilting foot, an echo quilting foot. There's not many optional things. Um, this uh, hemming foot, a compensating presser foot for different thicknesses, a quarter inch presser foot, that might be it. Yep, that's it. Okay, I'm looking for the bobbin info. Number seven says four pieces. I don't know. <laughs> I 
Yeah, this says it goes on this, uh, at one point they did say walking foot, which I thought was interesting. They called it a walking foot, maybe that was a slip. I don't know how to tell you guys with the bobbins, sorry. <laughs> I would just make sure that they're for the model that you need. That's what I'm going to do. I'm curious about, I'm trying to get that stick on there. I'm curious to see if my bobbin works in there, but I'm also not going to mess around. I'm not live on camera right now. I don't want to not be paying attention and miss something. I still need to figure out how to do the needle threader because the instructions are, they're not great in the manual. It just says to um, hook it over here and then thread the needle. <laughs> I was like, okay, but they, when they did it at the show, it was so easy. They were just like, boop, boop, <laughs> and it would just thread the needle. So I know it's really easy to do. I just don't know how to use it. Maybe Shim can give me a little um, uh, tutorial one day. All right, what else would you guys like to see? It's own bobbin that works in a few other machines, but they're not your standard bobbins. Okay, good to know. Hi, Missy. How's it going? It has a needle threader. I will tell you how to use it once I know myself. <laughs> this is some canvas. It just eats it up. <laughs> canvas, uh, I didn't sew that very straight, but canvas never looks straight anyway. Let me try this binding attachment because Binding is life. <laughs> I'm going to get my husband a shirt that says football is life. And then I'm going to get me one that says binding is life. <laughs> what is that dial up near the top thread bar? This one? That is the presser foot pressure regulator. You still haven't figured out how to use yours, Michelle? Oh no, I'll have to figure this out for us somehow. <laughs> the bar with the three holes. This? That's just to thread the machine. Right, Terry? I know. I was like, please let the, th the, th the threads be the right diameter. <laughs> Is that what you mean, Nancy? These are here? No, the dial just above your tension dial. What are you talking about? This right here? It, this, it's going through one, two, three. I followed the directions. I mean, it's just like my um, one on my indust the industrial. It's just vertical. Do you dial this right here? The pretensioner, pretensioner. I have it on my industrial too. One, two. This is um, <clears throat> this is the key thing for adjusting tension on my my industrial. This one actually has like numbers in a bar here where my, this one down here, it's like wild, wild west, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just twiddle it. <laughs> I'm not shy about adjusting tension. <laughs> I just, I just turn it. There is some little nod nodules right here that maybe signify something. The white dial, these are tension knobs right here. Is this what you're talking about, Nancy? I'm gonna hold my finger on here until you say yes or no. <laughs> Just so I know, I'm, I feel bad that I'm not understanding. These are tension dials. This is the pre-tensioner, this is the tensioner. I use this one on my industrial far more than this one. Her name is Artemis. <laughs> She's already named. <laughs> the difference between the machine and the machine I already have. I do not have a pretension that would preclude me from using that. I I really you don't have a jukey though, right? I adjust it until it works. Sorry, I I re I really do. I just adjust. 
This, when I adjusted the tension when I first got this, I did this one first because there's actual numbers here. For me that said, hey, we want you to use this one over that one, right? Um, on the, my industrial, it's the opposite. The, the top one does the most, uh, has the most impact in the ten tension. However, when I am doing top stitch threads, I have to do both. I have to crank both down. The industrial doesn't like the top stitch threads very much. So, it's just a dial. Like, I feel like um, tension can be really tricky to adjust. We all know that. But really, if you can't adjust it using your knobs, something else is going on. You either need to change your needle, um, you need to change the, can put basic fabric in there until you get it right. Uh, make sure your bobbin is wound correctly. If your bobbin is a sponge, like when you touch the threads in your bobbin, you need to re-thread the bobbin. You just need to thread the bobbin again. You need to rewind it, I mean. So um, when you, if, if just, you know, like I'm just gonna, it's like, it's no big deal to move this around. So if it's big, a big deal, it's not making an impact, something else is going on with the machine because the tension is not hard to adjust. It's just not the only thing that impacts your tension, you know? So, yeah, right, that's what, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to be patronizing to you guys because I, I totally understand how frustrating it is when you can't get the tension right, and my industrial does this with top stitch threads. It's why I will sew jeans together with the top stitch thread so I don't have to go back and forth and adjust it live on camera a lot. Um, and that's why, I, it is, it's just like a, they aren't hard to adjust. If they're not adjusting, something else is happening. Look at your needle and look at your bobbin thread. If, if you've had a trouble for a really long time, take it to a, a shop, something could be wrong. So, um, I'll, let me tell you what they call that pretensioner. Oh, they call this the subtension knob and the thread tension dial. That help? Yeah, I don't know, Nancy. I really don't think that's going to work in your machine because it's a um, it's a power source. You know what I mean? Like something has to power that buttonhole attachment, and when you plug it into whatever you plug it in on here, I think it's the the um, Oh, the um, foot pedal thing. So, you need someone to buy one that you can just try. <laughs> Let's look at, I'm going to look at the thread tension stuff and just see what it says. Subtension knob, okay. That doesn't really say much about it. Let's see. But like, yeah, like if your bobbins are looking funky like that too, you need to change things. It needs to draw off nicely, you know? And if it's squishy, it means you don't have enough tension being wound, so. <laughs> yep, so that. It's not a drop in bobbin, no, it's right here. It's on the side there. Just like my industrial, your bobbin always faces the way your needle threads. So here it is. I, I'm not, I can't, oh, I can't take it out right now. It's right here. It locks, which is really weird to me. So look at that. I can do this and it stays like up. I can't do that on my other one, which is kind of cool. You could just set it there and you're not gonna lose it. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. You have to close it and then it'll fall out. See? then it moves, but then you do that, it doesn't. If you have a drop in bobbin, you don't really understand what that is, but it does make it a little easier to get it in there. Yeah, you do, Nancy, but I, I don't think I would take a chance. I don't know. If, if they have a return policy, you could try it.
Maybe. Well, because there's no port for it to plug into on the industrial, Aisha. Because this, it plugs, <clears throat> so this little buttonhole attachment we're talking about, it has a plug like, oh, I can't get that to reach. It has a plug like, <laughs> like this, all right? So the buttonhole attachment has a plug like this that plugs into where your foot puddle plugs in on it. So that's how it gets the power it needs. Maybe Shem can tell us more, but um, my industrial doesn't have anything like that because the foot pedal, the, the table that the industrial is in is the motor, the machine, itself has no way to power itself. It's the table that powers the machine. So if you ever buy an industrial, <clears throat> if you don't have a table, you can't use your industrial. You have to have a table that has power. And um, the, the head of the machine sits in on top of the table. And then the presser foot, I'm sorry, the foot pedal is you know hooked to the table, which gives you the power. Yeah, do you have this hole here? This one here, Shim? This one? Is this what you're asking her? What's the hole for, Shim? Is it uh, like to mount it? I guess we'll learn, huh? What am I looking up? <laughs> do I have a hammer? I don't think I do. What's this again, Terry? What does this do? Oh, it just has a, a peg that fits in that hole? Oh, yeah, she probably could just make a hole in her machine. But I'm not saying you should do that. It's a ruffler? Okay. Let's do some binding real quick, though, you know. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Where's my binding? I've already asked Michael to make me something to hold binding at home. <laughs> the only thing that I was having trouble sewing was binding um, because for some reason the foot was... Um, I don't know why, but it wouldn't, it would, it kept, uh, how do I put it? It kept getting in the way. No, she has a home machine, but she says it's really similar to this. Yeah, right, Terry. I, I think like in the home sewing space, they're kind of gimmicky having a binding attachment. It's great if you're doing a lot of stuff, you know, like when I was doing mask making, I was like, cool, you know, but I had my binding machine then, so actually, never mind. <laughs> I think I may need to use that hole instead. Oh, it flipped. Whoops. Wasn't watching.
There we go. Yeah, that's working. I right, just check the return policy, Nancy, you know. It's not a cheap attachment, so that's why I would kind of be nervous about it, you know, like. <clears throat> Um, one thing that um, I was thinking about with the foot pedal is that, because um, I, I almost just brought my machine here without the cords, because they're, the power cord looks identical to my other Jukies, my, my cover stitch in the serger. And I thought, oh, I'll just use that when it works since it's already over there. And then I realized, oh, but this foot pedal does more than those do, but it doesn't actually. My Bernina foot pedal it has that tap feature. It doesn't have a thread clip. So that's the only thing I was wondering, Nancy, is what if the power port's different? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not an expert. Of course you can turn a corner with a binding attachment. <laughs> Just round the corner. <laughs> this is not from Erica Siskrin. No, 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 no. Those are different. Those are over there. What's the name of the binder? Um, I'll put it in the description. I, I think this one's from Waywack and I don't wanna put the wrong one because there's a lot of them. So, but this is a double fold binder. So it fold, double folds means that it's clean finishing the top and clean finishing the bottom. So they're both folded under, right? Single fold means you have a raw edge on the bottom and a double on a fold on the top. So the knit binders, though one's a double fold, one's a single fold, I'm pretty sure. So they're very different. The Erica Siskrin ones also come a long way. That's what these are. They're very nice though. So here's this one. These go on my um, cover stitch machine. These are great. This is a double fold. You can see how the double <clears throat> oh, actually they're both double fold. There's different widths. This is 48 millimeters, this is 35 millimeter. And that the width always pertains to the cut width of the binding. So this is 35 millimeter binding right here. One and three eighths. Yeah, you could turn the corner. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do a good job because I didn't have it rounded, but yeah. I love that that's what's impressive to you about that. <laughs> but yeah, you can turn a corner. That's kind of a, a easy corner right there, but you know, <laughs> I really did not set myself up good for that. Let's see. <laughs> Get it going a little bit. Not a very, um, whoops. Remember your pivot point, you know, like right here so that you can hold it while it, I'm pushing down really hard right now to turn the corner, pulling over. There you go. <clears throat> yeah. Knee lift. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think the, that was it, that was a splurge, but they're great. Those binding attachments by Erica Siskrin are really nice. Where are they where are they at? Are they in Sweden. So, um I I always tape the screw to here. So I don't lose it, you know? Cuz it just sits in that rascog cart over there. Um, what else do we have here? What was I gonna, what was I gonna try? I kind of want to try this. I've never tried this on my industrial. <laughs> I don't know why I'm gonna try it now. Oh, I brought some, I got some knit out. I was kind of curious about sewing knit. I've never used this ruffler. 
I don't really have any good fabric over here to ruffle. Let's just try a piece of binding. Cause that spoon flower stuff is way too stiff. It's just not very garment fabric-y. How does this work? Oh yeah, I can see it trying to ruffle. Oh. Interesting. It basically, you know what? Oh my gosh. I could just ease all my sleeve caps in perfectly with this. I'm putting this on my machine here so I don't forget to use it. Yeah, Terry. Oh my goodness. Erica's sewing box, Sweden. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm trying to think what else I have. I only have this other um, edge stitch foot and my invisible zipper foot. But I also have uh, my, my uh, standard zipper foot. Wait, where is that? Why isn't that right here? That's weird. I thought I had brought a foot home to try. And um, I didn't find it in there. I have a Teflon foot for my industrial. I could use that. Oh, here it is. So wouldn't you have to change the foot at the notch? Notch of what? Oh, okay, Julie. Wait, what are you talking about? I got one of those binders for my sewing machine, but it doesn't have a hole in the right place for it. Oh, bummer. Yeah, you could just use tape. Yeah, right, Michelle, I know. So um, this is a Teflon foot and it's basically for sewing on vinyl and um, neither of my, this, <clears throat> this machine does great. My industrial does really great with vinyl, but sometimes they don't. See you, Elena. Yeah, me too. Yeah, well, you know what, Auntie? I'd never tried it until today. I bought a few of them. <laughs> I never tried it out. <laughs> so bad. They're so affordable sometimes that I was just like, what else could I get? Well, you know, when you're trying to get free shipping. Okay, so hold it. Hold it back here to do and do what? I feel like... Wait, ho hold it back here? That doesn't do anything. So excited. Yeah, it's just the cap, but it's just a foot. You just take the foot off and on, right? Put the foot, fing your finger behind the foot to compress the fabric. But it just bunches up like that. Huh, I don't think I see a difference. Maybe a little bit though. Okay. Yeah, I would just put this foot on. So then you wouldn't have to add an easing stitch, Aisha. Yeah, you'd have to change the foot, but that's so easy. I know, that's what I was thinking, Rachel. <laughs> I've never been worried about sewing my finger, but I was a little worried this week and I don't know what it was, if it was just like a different angle and I wasn't in my like usual spot, you know? I'm gonna try this uh, zipper foot. So this is the zipper foot you get with an industrial. It's very lame. <laughs> Cause you can't move your needle left and right, okay? So this is another thing. What a show off, Aisha. <laughs> Tails you with a regular foot. Oh, interesting. I've heard of that, but I've never really seen great results with it. So I, I just didn't play around with it. Maybe I need to just work on it. 
So because the needle position doesn't move, um, for when you use this, this zipper foot here, you, I'll show you in just a second, but um, basically you move the foot instead. Yeah, I can see that, Julie. Yeah, so here, yeah, all my feet are working. <laughs> awesome. So here's the zipper foot. It's so nice when you have one that has a, some like purchase on the fabric. This is why this one's not that great is it's so narrow. And yes, you can sew next to a zipper without moving your needle with this, but you don't have a lot of traction with this, especially like look at how go far it goes up right here. So you have this very small amount of traction. So. So this one, <clears throat> you want to make sure your needle's out of the way so you don't bump it. And then you can just slide it left and right for what you need. So that's kind of nice. I ended up binding with this because I was having so much trouble binding. I, but I was hand binding, you know, not using the thing. All right, so what does that leave? I mean, it's got this little step, this ruffler foot. Are you sure this is a ruffler foot? <laughs> Ancient machine I learned to sew how the set can't move a zipper foot. Yeah, me too, Amy. You love the tiny presser foot on your industrial? Oh, this one here. It's just not that. Like my problem with this foot is when I'm sewing on, like I say, like a zipper fly, when you're doing a zipper fly, you are um, doing, you're attaching the zipper to the jeans and you're also doing a lot of really nice top stitching. And this is terrible for nice top stitching because the fabric really can wiggle under there. So then you're switching your foot back and forth and I just suffer with not switching my foot at all. I opt for the top stitching, so. Yeah, a shearing foot, that makes more sense. Do you think that it's better? Interesting. It's a shearing foot. So do you think with bobbin elastic, it would work really, really good? With the gathering foot, you just start, let's try, okay. Let's, ooh, this goes up to six? What? What's six look like? Okay. You guys make me learn things more than I would normally. I would just do whatever I do all the time and never try things. So it's good you guys are here. Um, I'll just try the spoon flower stuff. Okay. Stitch length. The stitch length goes up to six. <laughs> I've never seen it go past four. <laughs> Oh yeah, like that worked a little better when I held my finger up to it right there. So this is spoon flower. Um, so let's, I'll do an apples to apples comparison. We'll use some of this binding again, since I was, that's what I had tested it out on. So I have this stitch length up to a five. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Thank you, I forgot about stitch length. <laughs> Look at that. Thank you, Barbara. That's nice. That's actually good. Like the serger doesn't do a good job, even with the longer stitch length. I did, I did try to get you guys something and I haven't heard back because they sounded interested. So you can wait in here if I do, but I also put an affiliate link in Amazon, but <clears throat> we'll see. I don't expect anything. I'm not a salesperson. <laughs> I don't know how to answer all of your questions. I'm just doing my best. I'm excited. I am feeling like like I sew a lot, obviously, um, and I have a whole office that I rent 
dedicated to so-so, right? And I do a lot of personal sewing here, but mostly um, I'm fitting that in, right? And maybe if you see, see me sew something on stream, like whatever I'm wearing, I wanted that, so I made it for me, but it's different. At home, I made myself some cushion, like some pillows. I bought this quail fabric like a long time ago and I've been wanting to make, replace the two couch cushions because I love quail so much. And um, you know, it's a seven. Yeah, I just need to see the difference between these. And um, it was just so nice to just be able to do it. I just got it done, you know? Like I was like, oh, I can just do this now. It doesn't have to be something I stream. You know, I don't want to stream everything. It's boring, you know, like the things that I want to do. Where's my regular foot? I've, I've lost the regular foot. Oh, here, no. What did I do with the regular foot? So it was just nice to be able to be like, I cut out a couple of things and I was like, yeah, I'm going to just sew these up. I don't have to do this at work. Where's my regular foot? Did I lose it? Did I put it in here? Zipper, Teflon, zipper, ruffler. Um, hello? What the heck? <laughs> I lost the foot. How, how is that possible? Is it with the... Oh, here it is, I found it. No, I did not find it, that is the ruffler. What the heck? Well, shoot dang, <laughs> as my current favorite YouTuber says. <laughs> I'll use this one. So the ruffles foot is the same as the Bernina, I don't know. I don't have a Bernina gathering foot. I've never used that one, sorry. Barbara is a Bernina expert. Um, I don't know what I did with my presser foot. What, that's so weird. <laughs> so wait, what am I gonna do? What did you guys want? Oh, I want to test the difference between the lengths. Okay. All right. So this is, I'm just going to see if I can pull out some of that. There we go. All right. So this is going to be the six, the, the biggest length here. Yeah, you're a bet. You're an expert. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Donna. Can you tell me what I did with it? Oh my goodness. Do you ever see things sewn in the store, like bags and things, and it's literally four stitches per inch? That's one, two, three, four. That's four stitches per inch. <laughs> see, Aisha? All right, let's do five. slightly different for <laughs> right I know I feel I uh, I don't feel so bad now that I I was like hey shim have you heard of this that's the four three I usually do like 2.5 so this is the two big difference between the three and the two. And here's the one. Whew. This is why you buy the magnifying light. Hard, hard, what, what, what's hardy? Wait. <laughs> oh, the hard, yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, those are the different stitch lengths. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm usually between these two. I feel like these two don't visually look very different, but it really 
goes down when you get to here. Like I would say that this is half as the half as much as this, and this is half this one is half as much as this. But then from here to here, it's incremental. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is actually pretty good stitch quality. You can, you can see the purple on the back. So if I were sewing something, I would adjust it so you couldn't see that little that little dot there, but I'm not gonna adjust it right now. Yeah, exactly. 2.5 is usually pretty good on my industrial. Let's see, let's see what I think here. Cause I've, I, at first I was like, oh, the stitch length's kind of short. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, that looks perfect. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. Okay. I want to see. I want to try that. <laughs> Yeah, 2.5, sometimes it depends on the fabric I'm doing or the thread I'm using, and I'll do 2.25. Uh, <clears throat> or if I'm, if I'm doing someone's video, I do what they say if they say. Like cashmere's super specific, so I just do what they say. This is a top stitching foot, so it has this little like edge. I don't think I was close enough at first. So then you get a nice even width there. Sorry, I didn't realize it's not tilted down very much. I wasn't close to the edge here, but here I got right up to it. So it has this little guide. See, it sticks below so that sits along your fabric there. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I need a quick change screw. This one's not too bad. The first one I did, I did have to um, um, put some elbow grease into it. Elbow grease? Is that the expression? I had to hard turn it. It was hard. <laughs> it was hard to turn. And you put it somewhere to your right, and it's not like you dropped it into a container of some sort or your trolley. To my right? There's nothing on my right. Okay. Like over here? the heck? It's, did I drop it in my bath, my new basket? I do things so unconsciously sometimes. I wonder if it's fell in the garbage can. So weird. Oh, here it is. I put it on my sewing machine. <laughs> There's a magnet right at the front of this machine. Thank you. I put it right here. I have this little note that Cricket wrote me. <laughs> it says, have a good day, I love you. And then I, it was right here, see? <laughs> Thank you, Donna. <laughs> yeah, you were right. I put it right on that machine. Yeah, I think that this is a quick change screw, Terry. It's the, cause I can use my fingers to do it. This is it, right? It's the, the bigger kind. Cause my other old one was a little tiny one, right? So I'm kind of superstitious. I'm putting this foot back with this machine. It's all, that's finger tight. Do a little more. All right, well. Yay, Donna, exactly. Pretty fun, I'm so happy. So we really need this buttonhole attachment to arrive <laughs> so that I can take my machine back home after I do a few videos with it. No, it's not. Quick change is the one you just press in and take. Oh, yeah, I do need that. Oh my goodness. That's what you've been saying? Just call it your luck.
I will, I will. <laughs> I would never have thought to look back on the stream. It would have taken me a couple days to go, oh, I can just look back on the stream. Because I have done that before one other time where I was like, what did I do with that? Like, it was just bugging me. This is one thing that's really weird. I don't know if Michael's still in the chat, but there's a, it, the room I hang out in where I put these machines and stuff, I have a little end table next to the chairs we sit in. I made this little miniature quilt once. <clears throat> I didn't do that on camera or anything. I did it and then um, it's just like a little tiny, little tiny quilt. It was fun and I liked it and I didn't know what to do with it. So I just set it on that little table and it's like a decorative thing. See you, Justine. Um, and all of a sudden it's gone. It's just vanished. And I find, I thought for the first couple of days, I'm like, oh, I probably like set something on it and pick it, picked it up with it. Like, cause I come home from my trip and I couldn't find it anywhere. I thought maybe it's on my luggage. Maybe it's on the bottom of the laundry bag. Maybe it's in the laundry. And um, I finally asked Michael, I'm like, Tef, did you see this anywhere? Like, did, did I do something with this before I left? Like, has it been gone? He's like, it was just there a few days ago. I'm like, I know. We can't find it. It's so creepy. It's driving me crazy. And um, I think of, I can remember like literally the three things in my life I've lost. I do not lose things. I do not lose things. The other thing was a brown cone of thread me and Rayanne lost and we still talk about it to this day. We finally were like, it must have fallen in a garbage can. Like it must have just fallen off something into a garbage can and we threw it away and we didn't know it because we, we were just missing this one brown cone of thread. It made our lives heck because we always had the perfect number. So I remember that and I can't find this thing. There's like goo on my machine, there's goo. So yeah, of course, Nancy. I really hope that the EB1 can work for you, but I would, I would never tell you to just get it to try. <laughs> that seems kind of risky. $400 buttonhole attachment, but gosh, if it did the cross marketing they could do, I would, it'd probably make it out of warranty. So, all right, well, um, you guys will be the first to know when I get the EB1. They told me it takes about three weeks and they told me that um, a week ago and I they probably ordered it a few days before that. So we are on, so I feel like I'll get it in like two and a half weeks if we're being too precise. Like, I don't know, I'm not like whatever. It, it arrives when it arrives. It's gonna be great whenever it arrives. You can probably find one out in the wild and, and order it now if you want. So I just ordered mine with the machine. They gave me, um, they shipped it for free. So that's why. And no, there was no tax, that's why. So I will definitely let you know when I get it. It has nine buttonholes. I can give you a link to, do you guys wanna see it? Do you guys wanna see it? <laughs> I've literally saved these um, videos so I can probably find them pretty easily. <laughs> Things 25 pounds. Yeah, exactly, Nancy. It's maddening. I was really relieved that Michael was maddened by it too. <laughs> because um yeah. Let's see here. Let's see here. See you, Terry. <laughs> Let's see. Whoops. Oh, look at this cute little trailer they have. <laughs> I've never seen this one. I hope I don't get a copyright strike for this. Maybe I should be careful. See you, Hillary. <laughs> See you, Terry. See it right here? This is it. Oh, 
to send professional sewing machines. The best point is it's the world's first computerized detailed adjustment function. Computerized? You can adjust full size, optimized for your button. So you set your button on the screen right there. Shim says you can sew it twice really easily too. Eyelets. <laughs> yes, you can go this way or this way or upside down, right side up. That's what Shem says it does. Wow. This is the cutest uh, sewing trailer I've ever seen. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> it does, it copes well with um, man here. That's awesome. So that's why I got this machine. So we need to sew a buttonhole or a button up so I have something to add buttons to soon. All right, I'm gonna head out though. Tomorrow I'll be live talking about my new pattern, the double double. And then um, also that little case that I'm working on. Yeah, right, Rachel? Yeah, sometimes you just have to. Um, and then Saturday, I'm going to shop for fabric for a DVF wrap dress, which is the Diane von Furstenberg re-released wrap dress pattern, the iconic original wrap dress. <clears throat> from the 70s Vogue pattern. You can only buy the pattern online just to warn you and it's kind of pricey and it took me about three weeks to be able to get the transaction to go through because their site was did not like the fact that I have a PO box. So be careful entering your information. <laughs> um, but we will be doing a sew along here. I'm kind of considering also showing how to modify the cashmere at Appleton so that we can have a curvy version of this dress. So. We'll see how much interest there is in this, um, just because, um, you know, I, I have other things I need to get on, like the Fitopedia series. So uh, I have a bunch of uh, tutorials coming out soon too on seam finishes, so. Yeah, yeah, right, Mullen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. I'm glad you guys liked it. Let me know if you get one. Um, and, and if I get it, if they give you guys a deal, I'll let you know as soon as I can. And I don't know where to let you know, but here, so, or the guild, I'll definitely let the guild know. So if you're in the guild, I'll make a post. So, but don't hold your breath. I don't know. And there's no pressure for me from them for, from, from me to them. So anyway, all right, you guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Enabler. <laughs> Bye guys.